What's going on guys? My name is Hussein and look what I have done with OBS. Learning some stuff. <laughs> oh guys, you're making fun of me right now. It's like, yeah, took me one hour to get this right. Oh my gosh. All right. So yeah, now this article is very interesting, guys. It says this router is vulnerable to fake updates and cross-site scripting attacks. And uh, the reason I'm discussing it, it's not, it looks like a hardware article, but it's very, very related to security and backend engineering. And that's why I'm going to discuss it in this, in this channel, in this video. Uh, how about we jump into it? So if you own this type of router, Asus RTAC1900P, then you sh probably should consider uh, updating uh, to the latest firmware, and I'm, we're going to discuss how you should update it, right? Definitely not over the air. All right, so a vulnerable Wi-Fi router can leave your entire network open to attack, which is why users should update and download this framework patches from the device manufacturer as soon as they become available. We know this stuff, right? Security manager is trustworthy Martin Rachmanov, hopefully I pronounced your name right, uh, discovered two security flaws in the update uh, functionality of Asus uh, RT, this version of the router, for a moment that could allow for complete compromise of the device and uh, all the traffic that passes through it if left unpatched. Okay, so the first vulnerability that Rachmanov found was essentially when he, uh, I'm going to uh, simplify what's going on here, he basically did a grip and uh, looked at, uh, bought this router and he looked at the router and he found that some of the code the SSH, uh, the code that uses uses this dash dash no check certificate we've been there guys if you've done a curl and uh, there there's an option that does that does dash dash insecure and what that does is basically says hey uh server i want to communicate with you and whatever certificate you're going to give me, uh, I'm not going to validate it. <laughs> That's exactly what it means. And people, and I've been uh, guilty of doing this before in my career, uh, basically because it's just annoying, guys. Right? If you want to test something and you have like a server, like an internal server, and uh, this internal server has like a self-signed certificate or even an enterprise signed certificate that's what was in my case i was like hey i want to communicate but the browser or my code doesn't trust it because when it when it when it tries to validate that that certificate chain which we talked about right here go go check that video out tls certificates and all that stuff what happened is when a client want to communicate to a server in an encrypted manner that they need to exchange the key in order to establish the communication. We talked about that through TLS. And one of the information that the server sends to the client is some sort of an identity that tells you, hey, believe me, please, my name is really this ASUS server, or my name is really google.com. That's called a certificate. And the way this is done is that certificate is, is signed and kind of encrypted with something above it that's called a certificate authority that takes its private key and sign that certificate so it proves that oh this certificate authority is legit like let's encrypt like dg cert like dg sign right uh, all that stuff they sign the certificate and then it's okay i trust you so this is a proof that I, as a big entity, trust you. And now we need another thing that trusts this certificate authority because who knows what is let's encrypt. So an uh, uh, entity above it, usually it's called the root certificate that, that trusts the certificate authority by doing the same thing. That above things just, okay, let's do, let, let's, let's just encrypt the, the, the let's, let's just sign that certificate authority with my key. So you end up with a chain. And when the client receives that, it does the same thing, but it just unlock it and verifies that the chain. The root certificate though, guys, is what basically uh, doesn't have any parent. It's the, it's the maximum 
pattern that it receives. And let, let me switch to <laughs> let me switch to uh, to a face to my face so we can uh, discuss even a bigger way. Yeah. So yeah. So the root certificate, guys, in this case doesn't have any parent. It is self-signed. So you might say, how do we trust this root certificate then if it doesn't have a parent to trust, right? Well, uh, it is actually installed on your device. If you have an iPhone, you have an Android, if you have a Mac, or you have a Windows, there is a list of pre-loaded installed root certificates that everybody just trusts. Because why not? Because they've been vetted before. It just comes with your operating system. And this router does have some of these trusted root certificate as well. All right. So that validation doesn't basically exist in this router. Apparently, from what we're reading, allegedly, as they say. Right? So you might say, Hussein, what's, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Let's go continue on uh, the article. By the way, guys, do you know how uh, to switch in in in, uh, in OBS? I couldn't figure out uh, this hot, how to hotkey swap um, my scenes. I have to manually do it. So yeah, that'd be great if, you, if someone can help me with that. So yeah, so no, no check certificate. So what what what's wrong with that? If you have an Asus server, there is some sort of script that allows it to update its firmware using an over-the-air mechanism, OTA, right? So we'll click on a button, it will connect to the servers, uh, to Asus servers in this case, right? And what it will do, it will just, hey, this update your firmware and update your, uh, your stuff, this is the latest stuff, and let's just update your management user interface and all that stuff, right? If... The client here, which is the router, basically does not check if the server it's communicating with is indeed ASOS or not, right? Because it clearly says dash dash no check certificate. And we have done that in order to just, hey, let me, let me just uh, get, over, get it over with. Let, let's just uh, connect it to any server, right? So... If I happen to be next to the router, the ISP can definitely do it because every traffic that goes through you goes through the, your ISP, right? So definitely ISP can do a man in the middle. But in order to do a, a, a good man in the middle attack, the server, because we have a certificate, that man or woman, does not have to be a man, uh, will respond have to respond back with its own certificate to prove that it's the server right and if you want to do a man in the middle attack and once you serve your own certificate whether this is a shady self-signed certificate that claims to be a server then the client has to validate it but guess what routers this router does not validate the certificate at all so some attack a man in the middle attack can be easily done if the attacker is next to the router, right? It's, it's in the path, essentially. Uh, you can be in the path if you're in the same Wi-Fi network, definitely, and you somehow manage to uh, to pretend you are the the, uh, the the network hub, but in this case, it doesn't really work because the router is the client, right? Another, attack, another type of way is if you poison the DNS of asus.com, right? And and put, have it point to something else, a uh, completely other IP. Another uh, way is if, if it's the ISP, obviously, why would the ISP do that? <laughs> Unless they want to have to do something with you. But another thing is if, if it's in the way, right? So man in the middle is very, very possible with this. And guess what? The router will have no way that it's not talking to actually ASUS server because I can be the man in the middle and I'm going to serve you a self-signed certificate and you're not going to check it. You're, going to, you're not going to say, oh, I accept everything because you're not checking any certificate, dash, dash, and secures that anything. With Node.js, I've, I've done it before. There is a TLS insecure environment variable that just doesn't check the certificate. So how bad is this? Pretty bad. 
Now, if I managed to do a man in the middle attack on the router and I served it my own self signed certificate, right? And I, I pretend to be asus.com, the router will accept that certificate and will establish the, let's switch. Boom. It will establish an encryption uh, channel between itself and moi, which is the attacker. And then, uh, and, and then it's gonna say, hey, I wanna update my server. I wanna run an latest updates, right? And I, as an attacker, I says, sure, here is a beautiful uh, 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 bash script that you can run. Go ahead and run it. And here's the, the latest source code for your management UI. And it's a completely shady code. And the router will just immediately just get it and will run the code and will basically, I own the router now. I can look at your network. I can look at every pretty much everything in your network because I, I am the router. I am the gateway. You don't want to be in a better place as an attacker than the gateway itself, right? To all your other local devices, Wi-Fi devices and all that stuff. We're going to talk about what the router sees, by the way, guys. It's not really everything, right? Your router doesn't see that you're searching for uh, how to get slim, uh, right, in 2020 or, or, or how to get girls in 2020, right? It doesn't know any of your search results because it's encrypted between, it's an end-to-end -end encryption, in this case, with Google, right? So, and, and unless the router serves you your own certificate, the, the Google certificate, which is basically why, right? So, yeah, so that's how the man-in-the-middle attack works in this case, okay? Let's go through the other rest of the stuff. Awesome. So yeah, man in the middle, definitely possible with this, right? And and take this with 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 a grain of salt, guys, right? Because you can you can this could happen just not on a router. This is a router, but you can have your own application that that be in the same scenario, basically, right? All right, guys. So before we jump into the other vulnerability, I want to discuss something very interesting here. So how do you as the uh, how do you fix this first, right? As as the Asus in this case, the firmware. How do you fix the software? Well, I thought about many things. First of all, go ahead and enable no check certificate, right? That's one way. This way we know that we're talking to Google, uh, Asus, and the only way this will be overlooked is if the following happened, right? If I change this code to check certificate, now, okay, valid is certificate. If the attacker intercepted the traffic and served a self-signed certificate, it's gonna be rejected and that connection will fail. But if the attacker managed to poison ASOS.com DNS and managed to generate a, a, an actual certificate claiming to be ASOS.com, right? Or whatever the website, then it can it can actually serve that certificate and the client which is the router will actually trust it right will actually trust it because yeah it's, it's like a legit certificate so now just like that you have been attacked so this this is a little bit a little bit slimmer dns poisoning is not as easy uh, I suggest watching uh, Dr. Mike Pound uh, on computer file DNS poisoning videos. Really good to talk about that. So it's not really easy to happen, but it can happen. So what do what do I do next as as a as a as a client as a router as a company? So the, to me, the best solution here is to do TLS pinning, which we talked about right here, guys. Check out this video, TLS pinning, and the way. Because we know that this router should really just talk to ASUS servers. It has no business talking to any other servers, right? So we know that. What we need to do here is literally pin the public key of, of ASUS.com into the, the, the client router firmware code so that so that we only validate this 
bunch of certificate against that list that we hard coded in our code. This way, even if the attacker managed to be in the middle, we don't really care because they're going to serve us some other public key. Even if they DNS poisoned and managed to get a legit ASOS.com certificate, they're not going to be able to get in because, right, we pin that shit into the router. So now, guess what? The, all of a sudden, that's okay. You can do no certificate check if you're doing TLS pinning, right? You can do dash dash insecure if you are you're doing TLS spinning because you can have that server be even a self-signed certificate and that's okay. Nobody's gonna get that uh, actual key and pretend to be that the server. Now come think about it because the private key, yeah, you cannot get that private key. You can, nobody can get that private key. It's, it's the public key is there, but the pairing private key only known by the server, right? So technically you can still have this as no check certificate if you're doing TLS pinning. So that's, I would recommend, I think, routers and stuff that pretty much game application, mobile phones, just use TLS pinning. Don't worry about any of that stuff. You, you're going to get around all this kind of stupid, dumb attack. Yeah, a little bit uh, harder to code if you think about it because uh, you have to worry about... Yeah, just if updating the public key or updating the certificate in case the certificate changed on the server. But how often that happens, right? I mean, that's that, that I discuss all that stuff in the TLS uh, pinning, and let's have a discussion, guys. What do you think, right? So that's that's my uh, that's my ideas and ways to fix this, right? All right. So let's talk about the other vulnerability, XSS. So the, the Rockmanov found another bug in, in this time in the web interface so some sort of html page or javascript that 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 you interact with the with the page the router management right the asus use and that uses the to 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 update the firmware update so not only i can execute i can give you malformed content the page doesn't have any validation they take whatever the content comes back from the server they just shove it on the page directly without validating. So that's vulnerable to uh, cross-site scripting, which we talked about right here, right? Uh, cross-site scripting attacks. So just like, look, take that under the... Uh. If you don't validate it, you can run code as you, right? And, and that could be bad, right? So we talked about this, this attack. So I don't think... <laughs> if you're a man in the middle, this is my last really concern. Right. This is to me the mine in the middle flow is, is actually worse than that. So yeah, how do you update the firmware, guys? Right. So they they tell you go ahead and update the firmware, but obviously don't use the over the air uh, uh, mechanism because you might you might just get another firmware that you're not supposed to get. Right. So the the correct way of updating the firmware is go to asus.com, hopefully from a secure network, download that. Attack, attack, download that patch into a USB, go to your computer, log into your router from an internal network, 192.168.11 or whatever the router IP gateway is, and then literally upload that patch into your router and then apply. This is, this is the avoid going to the man in the middle route, right? Yeah, guys, so that's it for me today. Uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting article. So that's why I wanted to discuss it and how it is affecting us as engineers in, in building our daily applications. All right, guys, give this video a like if you like it. Dislike it if you don't like it. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.